All right, y'all ready to get into the Word? Why don't you turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You know, uh, we just try to, um, just try to, to, uh, to get the mind of the Lord, get the heart of the Lord about what, what to teach. There's a lot of different subjects, a lot of different topics that we can teach on. And, uh, and I just feel that, uh, that the Lord wants us to share, uh, some messages on the unlimited grace of God. How many of you know God's grace is unlimited? And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about the grace of God. You know, and I I was thinking about this and, you know, sometimes I think for me as an individual, sometimes I I steer away from the most, you know, listen, the grace of God is the greatest gift God has ever given the church. Amen. But sometimes I feel like I'm I'm I I steer away from it a little bit because of the misuse of the grace of God. The messiness of the grace of God. You know what I mean by that? I mean that people say, well, I can do what I want, live like I want, go where I want, and act like I want because it's all under the grace of God. Right? But how many of you know that's that's a misuse of the grace of God? Amen? But 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 says this, And God is able... To make all the grace abound to you. That you always having all sufficiency. In all things. May abound in every good work. Now let's just look at that verse a little bit. Now the Bible says God is able. To make all grace abound toward you. That you always. Having all sufficiency. In all. All things may abound in every good work. Isn't that a great verse? God is able to make grace abound towards you. So that the question is, what is grace? What is grace? Grace, let me just give you a couple of definitions. Grace is like a multifaceted diamond and it has many sides to it. It's really not one definition, but you could just give it a bunch of definitions, right? But let me just kind of just open the open the door here. Grace is the divine favor and influence upon someone's life. How many of you feel like you need grace? How many of you feel like you need divine favor on your life? Amen. Grace is God's love in action. Grace is God meeting us at our point of need in the person of Jesus Christ. How many of you feel like you need grace? I heard someone say grace It's the face God wears when he looks at my failures and he responds in a favorable way. How many of you like grace? Grace is great. Amen. But he doesn't just say grace. He says abounding grace. Now, what is abounding grace? Well, abounding grace is having an unlimited amount of grace. It's having excess. Abounding grace means having an adequate amount of God's grace sufficient for every circumstance and situation that you're in right now. How many of you know God's grace is sufficient? That's the abounding grace. Psalm 145 in verse 8 says this, The Lord is gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger and He's great in loving kindness. Notice what the verse says. The Lord is gracious. God, how many of you know God is a gracious God? Amen. Now, what we need to say here is God is a gracious, compassionate, kind God. Not like some of the people that maybe we had growing up around us. That was the polar opposite of this. Amen. Aren't you glad God's a gracious God? That he's a loving God. He's a compassionate God. Our God is a very gracious God and he loves to be merciful and kind to his people. We need to receive that message this morning. Amen. And the the incredible thing about the grace of God is God gives grace to people that don't deserve it. Now that messes with some of us. God gives us grace. I'm telling you, God gave me grace to be in his kingdom. 
I never earned the ability to be in his kingdom. I never earned a spot to be in the family of God. I mean, I was never like the goody two shoe kind of guy that God would say, now that's a good guy right there. I want him in my kingdom. If I would have been waiting for that, I would have never came in. What about you? Come on, y'all help me preach this morning. Aren't you glad he's a gracious God? Hey, listen, if he wasn't gracious, I'd have never made it. And some of you in here would have never made it either. Amen. Aren't you glad he's a gracious God? Yes, he is. Amen. Now, in 13 of the epistles, the apostle Paul wrote, in fact, all of them, he begins his letter with these words, with words like this in Galatians 1 and 3. Grace and peace to you from God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. Paul continually emphasized the importance as well as our need for the grace of God. We need the grace of God. That's the bottom line. We need God's grace. I'm convinced that the greatest gift God gave the church is the amazing grace of God. I mean, we sing the song. Amazing grace. You know, it's interesting. That, that, I don't know for sure, but that is probably the most popular and famous song of all time in the church. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like you and me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How many of you think grace is amazing? Amen. Now, what's so amazing about grace? Let me just talk to you a little bit about it. That's, we, this is going to take off here today. Okay. Grace is God's gift that prepares us for heaven. How many of you think that's good stuff right there? How many of you like heaven? How many of you like that idea? Romans 3.24 says, And all need to be made right with God by His grace, which is a free gift. They need to be made free from sin through Jesus Christ. Now, what's so amazing about grace? It's the free gift of God that makes us right with God. It's a free gift. You don't pay for it. You don't earn it. It's a free gift. And so if you asked 100 people, how do you get to heaven? If you just went out there in the street and said, how do you get to heaven? You'd get all kinds of answers. How many of you know that? But they all could be summarized, or most of them, just like this. You've got to earn a work your way to heaven. That's what they would say. Well, you've got you know, you to be a good person. And religion says... You have to live a perfectly holy and pure life to get to heaven. You have to meet certain religious obligations to get to heaven. You have to keep all these rules to get to heaven. How many of you get nervous so far? If you get nervous right now, you might have a little bit of religion in you. Because when it comes to going to heaven, it's not by rules. Christianity says you can't earn your way to heaven. You have to get grace by God to get to heaven. Amen. Heaven is a gift that comes through the amazing grace of God. So listen, the only difference between Christianity and other religions is grace. Because listen, religion says you have to do something to get to heaven. Christianity says you do nothing to get to heaven. The work has already been done. Amen. See, some of you are still nervous. I can tell. I can feel it. But listen, we got to break through this thing. Amen? Because listen, you can never enjoy your Christianity until you understand the grace of God. You're always going to be, you're always going to be like a prune in church until you understand the grace of God. Amen? Religion says do something. Christianity says it's done already. Jesus said in 9, John 19, 30, Jesus said it is finished. What was finished? Well, what was finished was the work sufficient for grace to be made available so people could be freed from sin and made right with God. Amen? See, it's either by works it's or by its grace that you get to heaven. And if we rely on works to get us to heaven, what's enough? How many times? How many times you got to clock in and go to church? How holy do you need to be to get to heaven if you can work your way there? The answer is never. You can never be good enough. None of us deserve to go to heaven. Amen. That's why we need grace. 
What's so amazing about grace, it's the gift that doesn't require us to do anything other than to accept it. Amen? Come on, if you receive that, say amen. amen. Now, a second reason grace is so amazing is this. Grace is a gift that can that is so easily received. It's so easily received. How do you get God's divine grace and favor flowing in your life? Well, according to the Apostle Paul, favor and grace is received by faith. It's by faith. He, Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Listen, not by works so that no one could boast. You know what, brothers and sisters? If we could work our way to heaven, we would walk around so arrogant and so proud. Look what I did. And God says, I'll have none of it. You can't get there by your works. Amen? So he says, you get saved by grace. And how is it? Through faith. So according to Paul, the grace to get to heaven is received through what, saints? Faith. According to Paul, the grace to receive God's favor and blessing is received through faith. Faith is the key that unlocks heaven. So then the question is, well, what is faith? Faith is simply believing and trusting God. Believing what God says. That's what faith is. It's not just having faith in anything. It's not having faith in your faith. It's not having faith in, in your mental ascent. It's having faith in what God says. Amen? So listen, grace to get to heaven is not received by working or earning it. God's divine favor and blessing is not received by our religious performance. But I think some of us, even though we've been in church for a while, we still think that way. God's grace and favor is received if I just toe the line and I don't go off the boundary a little, at all. Then God's grace will be there. How many of you know, man, there's no way we can toe the line good enough? Because what we call good enough, God says, it's not good enough. Amen? But you remember the prodigal son? You know, he wasted all of his father's inheritance. Sinful living, the Bible says. He wasted it on wine, women, and song. And the prodigal son then was in no way worthy of the father's mercy or the father's grace, right? I mean, he just blew it big time. He didn't deserve to receive grace from his father. He deserved, what he deserved from his father is judgment, is condemnation, right? That's what he deserved. But what he received wasn't judgment and condemnation. What he received was grace. Why? Because he believed it. He believed he could come to the Father and the Father would forgive him and accept him. In Luke 15, 20, it says, So he got up and he went to his Father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion for him, and he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. The father didn't wait for him to start performing right. The father didn't condemn him or judge him, although he probably expected to get that. The father graced him and he forgave him. The story of the prodigal son is a story of the grace of God. He didn't deserve a place at the table. He didn't earn a place at the table. But that's grace. We get from God what we don't deserve. And can I suggest this morning that each one of us sitting in this building today are receiving grace that we did not deserve. Grace that we did not earn. Do you believe that this morning? You see, until you understand grace, you can't fully enjoy your relationship with God. Amen. But now let me ask you a question. What would have happened to the prodigal son had he not believed that he could receive grace and forgiveness from the father? What would have happened to him? I, I have a, a, a thought. He would have continued to live in the pig's pen of life, void of the grace and the forgiveness of God. Right? 
If he'd have sat there thinking, okay, there's no way I can go back home because my father would never forgive me for all this. I mean, by the way, I blew all of his inheritance. I ain't got nothing to go back home with. And when I get home, I got to look at him in the eyes and say, I blew it. I spent it all and I didn't invest it. I have nothing to show for it. Certainly the father would never receive me. If he if he wouldn't have believed that the father was gracious, he would have stayed in the pig's pen. I wonder how many people are living in the pig's pen, void of the grace of God, that are going to church every day. Simply because they don't understand that grace is something that God gives us that we don't deserve. See, that's the key, saints. We don't deserve God's love. But He loves us anyway. Amen? Simply because He's God and He's merciful and He's gracious. Amen? You know, before I was saved, I, I used to think, man, I need to go to church. But I can't go to church right now. I mean, I, my, my life's a mess. I mean, the roof might cave in if I showed up at church. And so I was just working on trying to clean up my life so I could go to church. But you know what happened? You know what happened. You know what happened, right? I never got there. You can't clean up your life. Amen. The real problem was I didn't understand the grace of God because I thought I had to earn my favor with God. I had to deserve my place at the table. And so therefore, I wasn't coming to church. And then out of frustration of, man, I mean, I can't get this thing right. I stumbled in the church, heard about the grace of God, and the rest is history. What about you? Isn't your story very similar? That it was the grace of God that brought you in the kingdom? Amen? The real problem was that I never understood the grace of God. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. I'm going to be grateful for the gift of God. Amen? Come on, let's give God thanks for His grace today. Thank God for His grace. Amen. Now, a third reason grace is so amazing is this. Grace is available to anyone and everyone who desires it. What? Anyone and everyone. How many of you know God doesn't play favorites when it comes to giving out His grace? Anyone and everyone who wants to can receive His grace. Regardless of whether you're religious or you're non-religious, regardless of what you've done in the past, what you're doing in the present, God's grace is available. Regardless of how shady a background you have. Regardless of how many past mistakes and failures you have. God's grace is available. It's available to anyone and everyone who desires it. Now this is great. Romans 4.16 says, Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. Now, what Paul is saying is that not only is grace available to the Jew, to the Jews, but it's also available to the Gentiles. Amen. And so if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. And the Jews were the only ones that were in the favor of God till Jesus came. But now grace is available to everybody. It's available to anyone and everyone. Amen? You see, grace is what happened to that lady. Remember that lady that was caught in adultery? And the, and the, and the religious leaders, the, they, they drug her to Jesus and said, Hey, we caught her in the very act. I want to know what you're going to do about it. And you better stone her to death because that's what the law says. And you better give her judgment. That's what they were saying, right? But this lady didn't find judgment from Jesus. What did she find? She found grace. The Bible says in John 8, 7, when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and he said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. 
Again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones. And he was left alone and the woman. He was, he was left alone and, and the woman where she was, the center of the court. Straightening up, Jesus said to her, woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, no, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, I don't or I do not condemn you either. Go from now on and sin no more. You see, I wonder how many of us that would have been there that day would have said, oh no, crucify her. Crucify her. She's an adulterer. Crucify her. I wonder how many of us would have said, God, be merciful to her. I wonder what he wrote on the ground. I wonder if he wrote their name and wrote a lady's name next to it or something. Or, uh, you know, like maybe he might have wrote liar or something like that. Maybe he wrote grace on the ground. I don't know. But when they saw what he wrote on the ground, the older ones first. They just. They slipped out. And she was left with Jesus. And he said, where's your condemners? She said, they're all gone. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have things in your past that you would be terrified if everybody in this room knew about it. I think every one of us would be. You see, and this is the thing. We condemn ourselves for what we did in the past. And Jesus says, I do not condemn you. But listen, go and sin no more. See, grace is not the license to go back and keep doing what you did. Grace is, look, I forgive you. It's done. It's cleansed. It's washed. It's under the blood. Now, come on, let's live uprightly. Amen. That's the grace of God. But listen, this lady who had been living a life of adultery and immorality received the free gift of grace and the forgiveness of God. We can too. Come on, are y'all with me out there? So here's the point, regardless of how bad your past is. And I'm amazed is I can't remember. I can't remember yesterday anything I did that would bring glory and honor to God. But I can remember things 25 years ago that I did that the devil will keep reminding me of even when I'm in church trying to worship the living God. Amen. And so we need to know that grace is the ability to be released from your past mistakes so you can move forward with Jesus. Come on. Amen. Yes, that's great. So listen, don't let guilt, condemnation, and the shame of your past keep you from receiving and living in the grace of God. Amen. See, I learned this lesson. I told you about this already, but, you know, whenever I went to LPCC and, you know, those guys in there, they were murderers, they were rapists, they were robbers, they were abusers, they were violent criminals. This is what this class is made up of. So I'm walking in there thinking, well, they need to hear the gospel, right? But I was amazed at my lack of fully understanding the grace of God. Because whenever we started having service there, and these hardened criminals started crying in the presence of God, and falling on their knees and asking the Lord to forgive them, is that grace? See, sometimes even as church going people, we don't understand grace. We don't understand it. But if we fully understand it, I think we wouldn't be nearly as critical. We wouldn't be nearly as judgmental. We wouldn't be nearly as hard on other people. I think one of the problems is we don't understand the grace of God. That the only reason why we have a place at the table is because of the grace of God. And Jesus said, if you even look at a woman lustfully, you're an adulterer. Okay? How about that? Amen? Come on. Uh, that'll put the cookies on the shelf right there. Amen? How many of you know God's grace is amazing? It's amazing. Amen? And anybody can receive it. Amen. And that's what Romans 10, 13 says for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. So we need to be reminded. That God's grace is available to all of us. Amen. 
Now, let me just stop. I'm thinking about this, and I just want to bring this out. It's not in my notes here, but I just want to bring it out. You see, if we don't believe God is a gracious God and he remembers everything we did wrong and he's got his arms crossed to remind us. How can we be motivated to serve him when all we're feeling from him is a condemnation? We will never feel freedom to come and jump in his laps and love him. We'll never feel the freedom to open up our heart and let him fill us with his love and his grace. Amen. You got to be able to be free from your past. You got to be able to be free from condemnation and guilt and shame if you're going to enjoy the love and the grace of God. Amen. Amen. A fourth reason God's grace is so amazing is because of the tremendous price paid so grace could be available. Listen, grace is free. No doubt about that, right? But it certainly is not cheap. Grace is not cheap. It's not cheap grace. High price was paid. The Bible says in John 1.17, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. We need to be reminded, for grace to be available, it cost Jesus His life. That's how amazing grace is. The high price. Somebody said an, an, an acrostic for grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. And so it's because of the high price of the death, burial, burial and resurrection of Jesus that grace is available. See, what's so, what's so wonderful about grace? Do you realize the price that was paid so grace could be available? Do you realize what had to take place like we talked about earlier? We, do we realize that men and women laid their life on the line for us to enjoy the freedom in America? Well, do we realize that Jesus laid down his innocent, innocent life to be crucified so grace could be available? You know what? It's amazing because such a high price was paid for it. Amen. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus was a little narrow-minded. And he said, I am the only way to get to heaven. He claimed to be the one and only way to receive the grace to get to heaven. And so then the question is, why is Jesus... The only way to get to heaven. Why not Buddha? Why not Muhammad? Why not Harry Krishna or name someone else? Why is Jesus the only way? The reason why Jesus is the only way is because Jesus was the only one chosen by the Father and was willing to die an innocent death on the cross so our sins could be paid for. That's why Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? The Bible says in Acts 4.12, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. So if we want to cheapen the grace of God thinking we got to earn it, what are we saying to Jesus? Your death wasn't enough. Your innocent blood wasn't enough. If we think some kind of special secret society or some other God, an unknown God, can get us to heaven, what are we saying to the one that laid down his innocent life so that our sins could be washed away? Salvation is through grace. High price has been paid. Jesus laid down his life for it. Amen? Another reason why grace is so amazing is because the high price. Wouldn't you agree with that? And now, fifth and final reason grace is so amazing is because of this. The blessing and favor of grace never ends. It never ends. I heard somebody say, grace is the gift that keeps on giving. Grace is the gift that keeps on giving. Its blessing goes on and on throughout eternity. You know, you've heard, you've heard uh, with the... Um, United Blood Service, you give blood, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Well, Jesus gave His blood so we could have grace, which is the gift that keeps on giving. Amen? It never, never ends. 
The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Eternal life. It's the greatest benefit of amazing grace. It's not like, okay, you get to spend one year, one year rent in heaven. That's what grace, grace give you one year rent free in heaven. No, it's eternal. It's forever and ever. Amen. It's it's for all time. Eternal life means being with Jesus forever and ever in heaven. Now, sometimes we don't we don't really like I didn't hear no amen whenever I said that we get to spend eternal life in heaven. It's like we're so far removed from that. Okay, what about spending eternity in hell burning in a lake of fire where you wish a drop of water would be on your tongue comforting you? How many of you are glad you're going to heaven and not hell? Amen. That is the grace of God. And you're not just going there for six months or a year. You're going there for all of eternity. Amen. That's the greatest blessing. That's why it's so amazing. When Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, he told his disciples in John 14 and 1, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Where I am, there you may be also. The grace of God prepares us for the blessing that never ends, our eternal home in heaven. Right? Did you ever stop to think what heaven is going to be like? Whenever you read about heaven in the Bible, and it doesn't say a whole lot about it. But you know what? The Bible tells us it's a place of royalty where the gates are adorned with every precious gem known to man. The streets are like appear like gold. There's, they don't even need LED lights because the glory of God shines in there. It's a place of rest where there's no pain, no sorrow, no suffering. It's a place of reward where we'll be rewarded for all that we did in service to God. The Bible says that Heaven is a place of reunion where we're going to be reunited with our loved ones that were serving the Lord whenever they expired. It's going to be a wonderful place. Heaven is God's eternal blessing that never ends. When you read in the Bible about grace, the number one thing grace talks about is about the fact that we get to go to heaven. But while we're here on the earth, it's like, yeah, that's that sounds good. Yeah, but what it means is you don't go to hell. Yeah, that that sounds good. But hell burns forever and ever. It's torment. All of a sudden, okay, well, grace is sounding better all the time. And not only do we get to just visit heaven, we get to spend eternity worshiping. Do y'all enjoy worshiping and just glorify God? Imagine 24 7. You ain't got to get up and go to work. You're not going to get tired. You're not going to get drowsy. You don't have to worry about mosquitoes, stress, strain, anything like that. And with for 24 7, we're going to be able to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We're going to be in the presence of God, face to face with the one who's the lover of our soul. We're not going to have to worry about anybody doing us wrong, anybody kicking us in the teeth. We're going to live worry-free, stress-free forever and ever in the presence of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the greatest blessing of the grace of God. Amen. How many of you want the grace of God? How many of you like the grace of God? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 30, 18 says, The Lord longs to be gracious to you. He longs to be gracious. He wants us to be touched by His grace. He wants us to experience His grace. He wants us to experience His divine favor. See, we gotta, we got to receive that. Because some of us, other people, our life experiences have built this, this God that is a, a false God. We need to receive the fact that God longs to be gracious to us. It's like he's looking for opportunity. Man, I want to be gracious to my people. So we got to receive that. He wants all of us to experience his unconditional law. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
Jesus came to bring grace. So his, God's amazing grace has been made available through the sacrificial death of Jesus. But here, there's only one catch. You've got to receive it. It's available, but you've got to receive it. You've got to open up your heart for it. And listen, the grace of God, we're going to talk about this next week, but the grace of God is not just for salvation and a ticket to get to heaven. The grace of God is for everyday living. Amen? His grace, He longs to be gracious to us. But we got to open up our heart. And the Bible says in John 1 12, as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in His name. Amen? You receive this this morning? How many of you feel a little bit lighter right now? How many of you feel nervous? Where's He going? What's this? Would you just do me a favor and let's stand together. I want you to just don't move. Just stay still for just a moment. Let's just pray together. I'm thinking there might be somebody in this room today, although you're in church. You're still waiting to get your life clean before you can feel like you can experience and enjoy the love of God. You might be in your mind or your spirit feeling like you're eating the crumbs under the table. And the grace of God is here to say, no, listen, I forgive. I forgive. I cleanse. I wash. Don't try to clean up your life before coming to me. Come to me and I'll help you clean up your life. Would you just close your eyes for just a moment? And would you just pray with me right now? Just begin praying. If that's you today and you say, Todd, man, that, that describes me. I feel that way. Just, just raise your hand so I can see it. Okay, I see your hand. Anybody else to see your hand? Anybody else? You feel unworthy of the grace of God, unworthy of the love of God. You might feel unworthy to raise your hand right now. But come on, just raise it and say, I need the grace of God or maybe you're here today and you're like the prodigal son and maybe you get you still getting haunted by your past still living under the the guilt and the condemnation of something you've done years ago and and the devil won't let you forget it and you won't let yourself off the hook and you're living under the guilt and condemnation and you beat yourself up and feeling like I, I, I can't come to God freely and because look what I've done and, 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 and it's pressing in on you and you're needing grace today. You're needing grace. If that's you, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Come on, the grace of God is here. Just say, Lord, I receive it right now. I receive it right now. How many of you just feel you need God's grace? Maybe you feel like, like, like the woman caught in adultery that everybody's judging you, everybody's condemning you. But God's saying, I cleanse you, I forgive you, I release you, and I'll help you get over all the sin that is holding you bound. Come on, let's just open up our heart right now and let's just receive the grace of God. If you're here today and you say, Todd, would you pray for me? I'm not sure that I'm a Christian. I don't know for sure that I'm saved. I don't know that I've ever experienced the grace of God so that my sins could be forgiven. The saving grace of God. But I want to receive that today. Just lift your hand. In fact, raise both of your hands and just wave them up here at me. Just wave them up here. Come on, I want you to be bold. There you go. Be bold. Be bold this morning. Listen, those of you that have your hands raised, come on, look up here at me. Be bold today. Come on, slip right out of the pew. Come up here. Ma'am, just take a few steps forward. Just make a decision to say, I'm receiving the grace of God. Those of you in the way back over there, look up here at me. You just come on down. Just come on down. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for the grace of God. Thank you for the forgiveness of God. Come on, today's your day. Come on. The, the, the devil will try to beat you into the ground, but God is wanting to liberate you. Come on, just let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your cleansing. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for grace. Thank you for liberating us, setting us free by your amazing grace. Grace we didn't deserve, 
grace we didn't earn. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. When we were unloving, we surrender to you. We yield to you. And we thank you today for your amazing grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And amen and amen. Amen. Would somebody come and just pray? Those of you that raise your hand, I encourage you to come up here. We have some information for you that we want to give you. How many of you glad to be in the grace of God? Amen. Come on. Let's stay in the grace of God. It's not by how it works, but it's by the grace of God. Amen. If you need prayer for anything, we'll be up here. If not, the Lord be with you. Bless you as you go.